the pan yoruba social political organization afenifer has warned that nigeria may be drifting towards a dictatorial and tyrannical tyrannical state urging the federal government to shun nepotism, confront insecurity and restructure the country. In a statement by its acting leader, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, the National Publicity Secretary Comrade Jari Ajayi, Afeniferi said that it was forced into this unpleasant conclusion in view of the various actions and pronouncements of the federal government in recent times. They stated that the dictatorial tendency of the president can be seen in his insistence to go ahead with the reopening of grazing routes and the signing of the petroleum industry bill into law. Well, joining us to discuss this further is uh, Mogaji Adejumo. He is an Afenifer chieftain. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. It's good to be here. Great. Um, why, why is Afenifer taking this position. This is not the first time we've heard many people actually say that the president uh, is dictatorial in nature, the government of Nigeria is heading down that road. But why is Afenifer so certain and has decided to take this position? It's not a new thing uh, for us uh, to come out this way and to make a statement uh, categorically about the trend and um, the trajectory of this government, which of course um, is leading us into some kind of tyranny. And uh, not only that, uh, there's so much impunity, uh, disregard for the rule of law, and arbitrary rule, uh, to say the least. And of course, um, we can really explore all of this and you will find out that um, we have only come out to say exactly what has been happening since the beginning of this um, administration of Major General Muhammadu Buhari in the course of uh, governance. Uh, Nigeria is a multi-ethnic uh, configuration, uh, multi-religious composition, and uh, very little is given to the rights of the indigenous people. And we have uh, all manners of impunity and chief of that is this um, fixation on grazing, grazing roots, uh, and then the wrong nomenclature. Let's, let's even start from there. What is, what is exactly about the header that goes into somebody's farm, uninvited, and he goes there with his cow to graze on somebody's food produce. That is, that is no clash. Uh, that is impunity. That is, that is criminality. So why, why call it farmers' headers clash? Uh, this is the 21st century. Why would you want to believe that nothing has moved since somebody drew some roots? We have had developments all over, in which case, whose, whose roots exactly? The one that passes through an airport, and are you going to stop the plane from flying and taking off? And for crying out loud, what Abraham and Lot did 4,000 years ago, realized it wasn't going to pay, and then they had to go into some ranching. Exactly what was jettisoned 4,000 years ago is what we are reproducing in Nigeria. It is their history. So it is impunity to call it farmers and us clash, Call it by its real name. It is impunity to say that bandits are here and there abducting people. That is terrorism. You don't call them bandits. Call them by their real names. These are terrorists. And why would you want to impugn upon the laws of the land that you met and have not been repealed? In 1969, there was a judgment given in Ibadan that banned uh, open grazing. That law has not been upturned. It is still subsisting. And so are uh, other laws and legislation, in which case many states of the Southwest have legislated already against open grazing. And yet we still want to have a president who is so fixated on creating routes for cattle to move in this jet age when people are going to space. 
And but that but is when the fixation Mr. Mugatti, of this what administration is, what is, is about the president, I mean, because I want, I want to give the president the benefit of a doubt, and I'm not in any way trying to speak for the president. I'm not a presidential spokesperson. But in this regard, the president, neither is he here nor is his people here or are his people here to help to speak on this matter. So I would be the devil's advocate on this one. What if the president, who has surrounded himself, by the way, with a lot of technocrats and personal assistants and people who know how to deal with and do some damage control. Maybe what if the president has seen that this is the only solution to the issue that we're facing today? And he might at some point or to some extent douse tension. And that's why he's very insistent on this. Why don't we give him that benefit of a doubt? We cannot uh, because I can remember there was a time he wanted to be president in 2011. And such a question was um, uh, given to the contestants that came on a television program, and I have the tape, I have the video with me. And in 2011, he was still talking. He was talking about the grazing route. The grazing route is no solution. Let us face it. What we need is what others do, and they have been successful. Um, a state of is the state of Israel. Let me just begin to give examples now. Uh, on Kanile is about the size of Oyo State, about 30,000 square uh, uh, kilometers. That is the state of Israel. But then just about the size of one of the states of the Southwest. But they produce the best meat in the whole of Europe. They don't grace. You don't go. I have been to Israel four times. You don't, you don't see cows on the road. They have the ranches everywhere. Even where you call the desert, they've been able to create arable farming land. And they have the best cows, the longest, the biggest, and the ones that give the best milk. Why would we want to regress thousands of years into the kind of situation in which we read about in the holy books and believe that is the solution to a 21st century problem? If we have a problem it is about creating solutions, fixing the problem. If we have those who want to simply feel free to go and destroy other people's lands, we treat them as criminals. That is the way to do. It's not to give them the permit. And let us face it, there are northern governors, northern senators that have openly said this open grazing thing shouldn't be followed anymore. In fact, the 19 state governors actually said so at one time. Um, I remember uh, uh, somebody, an official of the, of the um, Senate, actually said that it's, it's not going to be possible to be talking about grazing roots. They said all of that, but Mr. President wouldn't listen. So it is not for the lack of the kind of uh, advocacy that would suit a situation that we have in Nigeria is, a, is about the obstinacy of um, Mr. President in wanting to do what he thinks is the solution. Okay. And of course, this is not nothing uh, to be sentimental about. He's a Fulani and uh, he identifies with this, this group. I have no problem with that. I'm a Yoruba man, I identify with my people. But that is not to now make my people to impugn upon the rights of others simply because I am a Yoruba man. I remember when President Obasanjo, a Yoruba man, was in government, and there were issues of insecurity and um, family situated uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the corner of the um, Oreo Nakakan for Iba Gani Adams, when the OPC was found to have um, been involved in certain insecurity. The president did, uh, President Obasanjo there, he did what was needful. In fact, he went to the extent of issuing a shoot on site order on the convener of the OPC. And but, when they caught him, he was but, in but, detention. But, but, but so the presidency case, has done let, that. But let let there Mr. has President, also been, we do respect, Mr. President, we do respect sir, sir, and the president has done the same this. in this Let him be scientific. He has let done Let him be so. scientific. Well, the president at some point declared a shoot at, shoot, shoot at sight for these bandits and terrorists. He did so sometime this year. So let's give him that benefit of doubt. But because of time, let's move to the PIA, which uh, used to be the PIB. Now, you're, um, the Affinity also seemed to touch on that. Um, you seem to have an issue with, uh, you know, the PIA. Uh, what are your concerns? 
Well, um, the truth of the matter is this. Uh, Nigeria is not exactly a federal state, because if it were, then we wouldn't even be having a PIB in the first instance. It's, it's being run as a unitary state. Um, this petroleum, the crude oil, is situated on somebody's land. And it is, it is their land. And the only thing that can happen in a federation, a true federation, is to have the people who administer where such things are, are found in situ to pay taxes and perhaps to remit part of the proceed to the center. But you don't take over the whole thing and uh, ascribe 3% to the communities and then 30% to uh, the river basin authorities of which we have um, almost twice the number in the north. It is not just right. You, you, you just don't trample upon the principle of federalism. And, and that is the reason why we we'll always have to question uh, the structure. And, and that is why we will always have people agitating, um, not for self-control, uh, um, not, for, not for resource control anymore, but for self-determination, if they are not going to be given the little things mm -hmm. that really matter in a, in a true federal state. Uh, and that is part of why we believe that this country is now being run on the basis of dictatorship. Rather but but can we can we also blame the PIA on can we solely keep this blame on Mr. President's table because this bill that became law was legislated by people who represent us and people who represent the people who have the oil right under them. So can we really say uh, that uh, it's Mr. President's problem? I he think... only has to accept to it. And there are several lawmakers on the floor of the National Assembly, both on the uh, the upper house and the lower house. Is this really the president's problem? Oh, now, now let us look at it critically. I started by saying that we have a problem with the structure uh, and that we are not truly practicing uh, what is called true federalism. And let us start. Let us look at it critically. Uh, in the municipality of um, uh, Kanu City uh, in the 60s, they had only two local governments. In the Principality of Lagos, in the 60s, we had four local governments. And in the 70s, Lagos was even increased to six. But today we have only 20 local governments, while we now have Kano and Jigawa that was taken out of it, having close to 100 local governments. And that is about representation. And that is the problem we have with a structure that is so defective. When you go to the House of Assembly, what do you find? You find that uh, the southern states are 17, the northern states are 19. There's a lopsided nest. But then it does not only end there, it ends with representation. There are over 100, uh, in terms of number, of those who represent the north over the south in the House of Reps. And if you go to the Senate, there are um, six senators because of the 1917 dichotomy. Six senators that the North have over the number that we have in the South. And if you add Abuja to it, it becomes seven. So there's nothing you take there that should favor what is called equity okay. that will be found to be useful because of the sheer number that they will throw at us. And once they throw the number, they can pass the bill. Okay. And it only behooves on a president who believes in equity, who believes in equality, who believes that there should be, there should be no inequity, that such a bill is not put to law. Looking okay. at the fact that we have seen this president refusing to sign even certain bills that have been on his table for the past two years. Why okay. quickly run to put his accent to this particular bill? And I'll tell you something else. Quickly, quickly, north, because we have to go. Sorry, let me, let me just finish this because this is very important. A group in the North actually congratulated 
the members of the National Assembly from the North for doing what they call the right job of making sure that the bill was passed in both houses that gave the North an edge over the South. So the president went ahead and put his accent to inequality. And that is the point we are, we are making. Hmm. The, the structure itself is bad. The constitution itself is bad. Afeni Ferry has said, said that many times, that we cannot continue with this defective structure. We cannot continue with this defective uh, 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 constitution. And there's no point in trying to patch a tire that has suffered a hundred punctures. All we have to do is change completely, make okay. a new constitution. Right. We right. cannot continue with this bad structure. Okay. This country, believe me, is tottering, tottering towards being a failed state. And all because of the bad structure, all because of the defective constitution. Well, we want to thank you. Mogaji Adejumo is an Afeni Ferret chieftain, and we want to thank you for being part of this conversation. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, I will give you my take. It's time for my take. So um, it's very shocking that we take a lot of decisions without consulting the Nigerian people. This is what we call a democracy, but then the government is not for the people, it's not by the people, it's not in the interest of the people, unfortunately. So we've been asking for restructuring day in, day out, and we've even politicized the word restructuring because now it means different things to different people. How do people get the kind of government that they deserve, the kind of governance that they need if the government is not listening to the people? Where is the room for tete-a-tete -tete with the people who lead us. If government is not going to listen to us, who are you governing if the governed does not feel heard? How are we going to be reopening our doors to people who have killed, who have maimed, who have destroyed our means of livelihood, taken our homes from us? We've had to run away to, from places that we once knew as home because a group of people said they do not want Western education. And today, it's easy for our governments and our leaders and even our security agencies to come up with an idea. And I'm not in any way saying that it's wrong for us to try to rehabilitate people who say that they're repentant. But how easy is it going to be for the people who've lost children, who've lost husbands, who've lost brothers, the soldiers who are fighting at the edge of this war, trying to keep our borders safe? How easy will it be for these people to accept these so-called repentant people back into society. Are we making the right choices here? But yes, we want to win the war against this insurgency. Yes, we want to put an end to terrorism, but are we going about it the right way? So I want our governments to do the right thing. Think about it because Nigerians are watching and you will hear from us soon. I am Mariana Cole, thanking you for watching.